Kelbrook versus Amir Khan. Boxing games and flow of the fight. So boxing games are the little games that we play with our opponents when we're looking for openings. We're trying to expose a weakness or something. And we're going to be talking a little bit about some of the games that Amir Khan likes to play on offense and defense, as well as the ones that Khan, uh, Brooke likes to play um, on offense and defense. Um, and kind of see how, talk about how they mesh and how the fight's going to kind of play out because of these and, you know, kind of keys to victory uh, for, you know, based on kind of some of these ideas. So defensively, Khan likes to use his speed to counter. Now, this is kind of a new thing, I think, for him, being able to get his head off the line and throw a left hook, but he does a pretty decent job here against Billy Dib here, catching him with this shot a few times, actually. Um, and we're going to take a look at why this is important, but on defense, preferring to control the space, not with feinting, not with probing, not with an active guard, <clears throat> but with a left hook by punching. Now, it's not always going to work out for him super well if he misses his punch, but uh, if, his, if he has control of his opponent and his opponent is also not fainting and probing or setting anything up, these types of moves may be very effective, uh, especially because if you notice his leaping left hook, it's kind of a trademark of Kell Brook in a lot of those... Uh, that era of fighters as well. But another boxing game that Khan likes to play, just being fast, okay? Number one, he likes to come out and he likes to step really quickly and control the line with punches. Again, not really feinting, not really probing, but punching to control the line to hope to get into position as he covers all this ground here. Now, we got to see how well that worked out for him against... Uh, who was that that knocked him out? Terrence Crawford. It did not work out very well for him against Terrence Crawford. But as we can see here, still stepping with his jab here. Even though he has his opponent against the ropes, look at how deep he has to step into his line. Boom, all the way this way. And no follow-up. So what was the point of stepping so far into his line? Again, it's just one of those habits that he has that uh, until he finds someone to kind of teach him how not to do it, he'll always step with his jab this deep. It's the only way he knows how to get his power into it uh, because he doesn't actually know how to transition his weight to the back foot like he does with the hook. Uh, now, these are going to be some of the sequences that he wants to avoid on defense, okay? Allowing his opponent to unload and throw multiple punches at his guard because he doesn't really block punches. Notice he's just kind of putting his guard together and hoping that the punches don't wind up making it through. And we can see one of these shots does make it through. But I want to point out, defending again with the left hook. Again, the left hook uh, counter right there is going to be very, very, very important moving forward. But another, another strategy that we want to avoid if we're Amir Khan is... Punching one at a time with his opponent, okay? Uh, Amir Khan's biggest s secret to success is his speed, right? Uh, you can beat a lot of people without having to be a very good fighter if you're much faster than them uh, because they, they have a hard time interacting with you. Um, again, on average, Canelo is a much, much better fighter than Amir Khan, but until Amir Khan slowed down, his athleticism was able to carry him throughout the fight and carry him through the, through the rounds. And he was able to make Canelo look kind of silly in some spots, being so much faster than him. Uh, so he wants to avoid this type of pace with, with uh, Kell Brook. He wants to avoid um, going one punch at a time. Now, we're going to take a look at here. One of Amir Khan's biggest success is going to be his combination punching. Okay, Kell Brook likes to counter, right? Now watch him. Try to pull back the counter on the on the stepping jab here, right? And try to come forward with the right hand. But the double jab was able to stop him from being able to throw that. Now, why is that important? Well, let's go ahead and take a look here. One of the ways... Oh, no. Whoops. One of the ways that Kell Brook likes to control the space between him and his opponent. And his opponent is going to step with this jab here. Watch his foot here. Boom, takes this frame, and he steps with that jab, but he's going to pull back and counter him with the hook. Now his opponent's going to take another step here, and he's going to counter him with the hook again. Again, this is one of the boxing games that Kell Brook likes to play with his opponent, is interacting with them when they throw the hooks, or when they throw their jabs onto the line, uh, by countering them, kind of pull countering them. Um, but interacting with them each time they interact with their jab. Now... Watch his opponent take a step again. He gets his head just off the line and kind of tags him with a little bit of a right hand there. Again, one of those boxing games that Kell Brook likes to play and is actually pretty good at. Um, again, taking advantage of the fact that his opponent is constantly stepping with their punches. Now, <clears throat> uh, again, so the combination punching is going to be very, very, very important for Amir Khan so that he can offset the rhythm and the timing of 
Kelbrook's uh, counters. Now, feinting and probing would also do a very similar thing, being able to draw Kelbrook into the line and counter him after. But Amir Khan's not really a very good feinter or prober. Uh, he prefers to throw punches. He will step with his feint a little bit, but again, that's one of the reasons why he was able to be beaten so soundly by Terrence Crawford. Uh, so, what are some of the things that uh, are not good for Kelbrook? Well, he's got a susceptibility to the left hook here. Okay. Notice he's controlling his opponent. His opponent gets on the line with them, and then just lets a left hook go. Even though Kelbrook's hand looks like it's in correct position, right? He uses his hand kind of in a perfunctory way, and he doesn't use it in relation to his opponent. So it doesn't always wind up being in the correct position for him to interact with his opponent's left hooks. Now, that's really bad for him, because watch him make this move here, probing right hand, his opponent's in the high guard, and now he comes up with this leaping left cross uppercut kind of move, right, as he pendulums forward. I want you to pay attention to how his opponent, if he had been throwing a left hook, would have easily been able to interact with him with that left hook on this beat and this timing. Again, one of the reasons why I think Kel Brook, again, his hand and his shoulder doesn't have as much rhyme or reason for the positioning, um, for defending his front foot position, uh, or defending against the left hook uh, in most of his sequences. Now, again, another version here, boom, boom, and then coming in with that shot, and again, getting tagged by another left hook. And again, I want to point out that this is a very similar sequence to what we were seeing with Amir Khan here, not in this sequence here, sorry, in this one here probing right hand into the leaping left hook here, cutting the guard, and then the left hook. Again, I think that this is going to be a very common sequence, um, and this is going to be one of the places where the fight is either won or lost, depending on how well Kel Brook can manage his ability to deal with that left hook. And again, it gets worse for Kel Brook throughout the fight. Again, getting caught just on the inside for no reason with lots and lots of left hooks. Boom, here, countering with the right hand off of a stepping jab. His opponent pulls off and hits him with a, a left hook in a very similar pull counter style that he was hitting him um, earlier with. So, and again, this is one of the, the biggest, most egregious ones, right? The left hook coming, boom, catching Brooke, and then Brooke coming forward. Again, a long sequence here. And again, very susceptible to the left hook on the inside while he's penduluming and throwing his punches. Um, all very, very dangerous things for uh, Kel Brook. So, what does the fight look like if Kel Brook is winning, though? Okay, I'm glad you asked. Well, it's going to be fought one punch at a time. Now watch as... Uh, Kelbrook's opponent rocks his weight back and he's about to bring his weight forward and that's the timing at which Kelbrook likes to attack, right? He's timing his opponent. His opponent likes to time and throw punches off that front foot. So he's meeting his momentum and beating him to the punch. Uh, and Kelbrook is bigger than Amir Khan. Okay, he's bigger, he's stronger, he's a better wrestler, um, and I think he's going to have more control over his opponent. And if he's able to kind of wrestle him and stop him from being able to throw combinations at him, by interrupting him, uh, managing his weight a little bit, he's going to be able to keep the sequences nice and short like this and make it so that his opponent punches one punch at a time with him. Now, this is very important because Amir Khan always steps with his punches and that takes a lot of energy. Okay, But it, it also, if he winds up getting countered a lot, it's going to make him very hesitant and it's going to give Kel Brook a lot more opportunities to be pushing forward and getting him on the ropes and being the one landing the bigger, harder jab because on average, Kel Brook has much, much better technique than Amir Khan. And that means that he's going to be able to do all the things that they do <coughs> uh, in the ring much easier, much more fluid for many more rounds and with better power without fading. And Amir Khan has that very flashy, very fast, very explosive style that leaves him with lots of downtime in the ring where he has to be like, oh, what do I do now? Well, how do I get my energy back? Because he throws so many punches or so much what. But this move here, one, two, leaping left cross, left hook-ish move, um, is going to be a very common source of offense for Kel Brook. And if Amir Khan isn't able to control the space with feinting and probing and make uh, Kel Brook use this move uh, without being... Well, without 
knowing it's going to land or without having been able to put enough pressure on him, right? If he's not able to get his technique going um, by countering him with the left hook sooner, um, he's going to be able to use this momentum to kind of pound out a victory, a very easy victory against um, Amir Khan. As Amir Khan's not going to be able to take these big leaping punches over and over and over again. But the problem is, is Amir Khan uses so much energy when he fights. He uses so much energy in his engagement. So uh, I think that the biggest advantage here belongs to Kelt Brook. I think, again, he's just going to be bigger. Uh, I don't think that Kelt Brook is... I don't think Amir Khan is going to be able to flood the line with punches as much because Kelt Brook is going to be able to time him coming in um, in a lot of those engagements. Um, and as long as he's able to interact with him and counter, uh, he'll be able to get control with him, of him after those counters uh, and maybe make it a little bit more difficult for... Uh, for Amir Khan to follow up. Now again, Amir Khan's going to need to faint. He's going to need to probe. He's going to need to stop Kelbrook from feeling comfortable controlling the space between him and his opponent with the counters um, by drawing those counters out. Uh, otherwise, Amir Khan's just going to get pushed up to the ropes, pendulumed on, and, and get beaten up. So anyway, that's kind of my pick for the fight. I think this is going to be... One of those fights where, like, for the first six rounds, first four rounds, it doesn't look like a mismatch. And then all of a sudden, everyone's like, oh, well, you know, we all knew this about Amir Khan. We all knew this about Amir Khan. We all knew that. And um, uh, we'll realize it was a mismatch all along. Uh, anyway, if you guys are interested in the full fight film study, check it out on Patreon. It's 10 bucks to sign up, 10 bucks a month. And there are... Th Almost a thousand videos on Patreon for you to watch. Um, and I put up more content on average in a month than most of my uh, Patreons or patrons are able to consume. So I put up a lot of content. It's usually almost every day unless I'm traveling. Um, but um, yeah. Anyway, let me know what you guys think in the comments below. And if you guys would like me to take a look at your sparring, your fighting, your training, your drills with the uh, same kind of level of scrutiny that... I do these fighters. Um, check it out. My coaching Patreon is 50 bucks to sign up, 50 bucks a month. Um, and it comes with all kinds of cool shit. So, um, anyway, yeah. Thanks, guys. <laughs>